If you're looking to get some focused SAT practice with lines, angles, and triangles questions, you've come to the right place. Just make sure to pause the video and try each question on your own first. Let's get started. Starting with an easy one here, they give us a triangle. They tell us that AB is equal to AC. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. And ABC has a measure of 67. So ABC has a measure of 67. That would be this guy in the corner here. Since uh, BA and CA are congruent, that means that C also is 67 because it's an isosceles triangle, that's what it tells me. I know that there are 180 degrees in a triangle, so 180 degrees minus the two 67 degrees, 67 times two is 134, and 180 minus 134 is 46. So my answer is B, 46. Moving on to a medium question. There's a lot of wording here that I know when you have these geometry questions, it's basically saying the figure is what it looks like. So I'm going to ignore this because I already know all that stuff is going to be true and I see the wording there. Uh, here's where I want to pay attention. AB equals 9, so I want to label that. BC equals 18.5 and FE equals 8.5. What is the length of ED to the nearest tenth? So I want to figure out the length of this guy right here. All right, so what I'm dealing with is uh, similar, similar quadrilaterals, basically. Anytime you might be familiar with this, if you have a triangle, and then within that triangle, you have like another mini triangle, something like this, uh, that is automatically going to be similar triangles because we can already see that they literally share the same angles, right? Uh, same things going on here. Because of all the information that's listed up top and the way that we can see these visually, you know, there's a quadrilateral and a bigger quadrilateral, they share these angles here, which means they share these angles here as well. So these are similar quadrilaterals, meaning they are proportional. So all we have to do is find a small side compared to a big side and then match that ratio and we'll get our answer. Let me show you what I mean. So our big quadrilateral, we know everything there is to know about this side right here, AC. We know that AC is going to be 9 plus 18.5. I'll have the big quadrilateral as my numerator. 18.5 plus 9 is going to be what? 27.5. And then the small triangle I'll have in my denominator here is 9, right? It's just that side BA, which is the equivalent of the, the same side for the big one, so 9. And then this should be equal to, in our denominator, this time we have 8.5, and then our unknown DE. Actually, no, that's not true. Let's be careful. So this is going to be the length of FD, actually. In fact, I'll change it from X to FD, because we're finding out the the length of the big the big side over here right so we can cross multiply and i'll definitely just use my calculator here so it's going to be 233.75 and then that's going to equal 9 fd divide by 9 and then moving this over we end up with fd equaling basically 25.97 uh, it is to the nearest tenth so i'm just going to say basically 26. anyway if fd this whole thing is 26 then uh, ed would be 26 minus 8.5 right so 26 minus 8.5 that's going to be 17.5 so my answer is b all right and let's end with a hard question. So from the last one, we were just talking about similar quadrilaterals. You might see that indeed, based on the way this is looking, we have a 90 degree angle. We see it bisecting an angle. We do have similar triangles. However, I would argue there's a faster way to go about this one. First thing I would do is recognize that we have a three, four, five triangle. That's a Pythagorean triple. Next thing I would do is actually get the area of this triangle, and you'll see why in a second. So if we imagine that our base is uh, four, our height, because of this 90 degree angle at N would be three, right? So the formula for the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. So then we have three times four divided by two, also known as 12 divided by two, so our area is six. How is this going to help me get NQ? Well, what if my base times height instead, I used five as my base and my height is this unknown. Now all of a sudden we have area equals six equals base times height. Base is five. Height is going to be what I actually want because it's this line right here divided by 
2. Multiply by 2, we get 12 equals 5h, divide by 5, divide by 5, and then my answer is 12 divided by 5. You can definitely plug that into your calculator, but it's going to be 2.4. 2.4 equals h, and that is my answer. Working through specific problem areas like you just did is a great way to improve your score, especially when you couple that with practice exams that resemble the real thing. To sign up for a free proctored practice exam that you can't find anywhere else, go ahead and use the link in the description.